Oh, wow. So I'm going to um, continue. We have since September, we've been working with the, uh, the four foundations of mindfulness, the Satipatthana Sutta. And, um, and so we've worked with the first two and it's my intention today to begin with the third foundation, the third Satipatthana, uh, which is mindfulness of mental states. So the first, just to do a little review, because not everybody was part of the, um, of the of all the sessions. So the first is the is mindfulness of the body. And so in mindfulness of body, we begin with mindfulness of breathing, and we also begin with um, bringing an embodied mindfulness. So in, in, in whatever way we're moving the body, however the, the body is comported, sitting, standing, lying down, walking, um, and in all the daily activities that we do, the, the, um, uh, when we're getting dressed, when we're preparing our food and eating and having a shower, whatever we're doing, we can bring that quality of present moment attention, of non-judgment, of kindness and acceptance, of non-preference. So, so if you know, uh, if 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 the shower for some reason, you know, somebody somebody turns on the hot water and the shower goes cold for a moment, you know, so. So it can feel unpleasant, and 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 but we don't need to get reactive about it, you know, or angry, or you know, like how inconsiderate or whatever, you know, how the mind goes into story and reactivity. So it can be mindful of, you know, in this case, in that case, that's you know, example I gave, the sensation of the water becoming cold, and and also it would we would be mindful of the feeling tone, which is the second satipatthana, um, but it might feel unpleasant. Um, it might, it might feel neutral. Um, so just, just that, that uh, non, you know, uh, non-reactivity, not contracting. Non-reactivity is actually the seed of equanimity um, that, you know, when we recognize that things arise and, and pass away, uh, that things change and that we can be with the changes as they arise. So in, in every moment of mindfulness, that there's that seed of equanimity, of, of, of the capacity to be with things as they are. And, um, and so and it, it strengthens and grows until it becomes an awakening factor. In fact, it's it's the last of the awakening factors. When when equanimity is is developed and perfected, it it's um, it's really it's called the threshold of awakening. So um, so so we so we we've practiced uh, not only mindfulness of the body as a uh, an awareness of being embodied. The knowing how the body is in, in each moment and how what sensations are present and and then with the second satipatthana the feeling tone vedna where we're aware of of um, that quality of pleasant unpleasant or neutral feeling tone uh, and um, and so you know as I just mentioned sometimes Sometimes things feel pleasant, sometimes things feel unpleasant, and sometimes, you know, they're kind of neutral, neither pleasant or unpleasant. And then further, the Buddha talks about not only what he calls the worldly feeling tones, you know, but also um, the non-worldly. So, you know, we can call them worldly and unworldly, uh, are kind of words we don't use so much anymore. Uh, so uh, we can say sensory. Um, feeling tones, and to me, that those are clearer words, or non-sensory feeling tones, and so these non-sensory feeling tones are spiritual qualities, um, and um, and they could be, um, uh, you know, 
a sense of gratitude, just the quality of gratitude, of generosity, of uh, as the mind, as we practice and the mind begins to become more calm and settled, you know, that is, that is a pleasant feeling tone. Yeah, can I ask you to close the window in the front? She did close it Oh, you did close yeah. it already. Okay, yeah, yeah because it's, yeah, it's 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 feeling a little cold. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna. Now's not the time to get sick. Huh? Now's not the time to get sick. Yeah, no, I, I wouldn't get sick from that. But just it's it's a little unpleasant feeling. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so um, yeah, so uh. So, so, so in, and we, and we can, we can discern between the, the sensory and the non-sensory feeling tones in that the non-sensory feeling tones, you know, are related to practice. And so around them, we don't tend to feel, you know, the, the, the three poisons, the grasping, and an aversion and delusion or confusion. So they tend to be qualities of, of heart, mind that support our, uh, our progress on the path, our development, our, our spiritual development. So I mentioned a few generosity, gratitude, peace, collectedness of mind, um, uh, acceptance, openness, uh, the, the freedom that we feel when we recognize, you know, renunciation, uh, when we recognize that we're holding to a deluded state of mind, and we, you know, and in recognizing, we can let it go. And there's that, there's that space that we feel, you know, when we recognize we've been holding on to anger. And then, and then we, we let go, we say, oh, that's holding and that's, you know, and I can let that go. And then we realize, oh, my heart feels more open and settled. And so that's, that's a non-spiritual, pleasant um, Vedna feeling tone. And, and there are un, not unpleasant feeling tones, um, which, are, um, which could be um, the suffering that we experience in recognizing how the mind, um, how the mind is so caught in clinging. And so, you know, in the moment, you know, in that space of time, however long it is, between the recognition that the mind is caught and the capacity to let it go, uh, there, you know, there can be a suffering, which is in a way associated with our practice because it's not only a suffering of the deluded state, but it's a suffering of recognizing how deluded we are. <laughs> and in a way that's, you know, that's, that's called the suffering that leads to an end to suffering mm -hmm. because in recognizing that we do have these habits, uh, we, we become more motivated, it kind of nourishes the seeds of, of our motivation to keep practicing because we recognize how suffering comes from delusion. And, um, and so, um, so these, these two uh, uh, quality, these two uh, developments of uh, Satipatthana uh, the satipatthana of mindfulness of body and the satipatthana of mindfulness of feelings um, give uh, are a kind of a foundation, give a foundation for the, um, the, the third satipatthana, which is mindfulness of mental states. So mental states are these uh, kind of, um, the mind can become a wash with, um, uh, with greed, um, or the mind can become a wash with, uh, with grief, which is a kind of a, a, 
a clinging, a clinging to something that's not there. The mind can become awash with, uh, with rage or anger. Um, and so, uh, so when, when, we, um, when we become aware of these, uh, the, the Buddha says in the, in the teachings on mental states that the practice is to be mindful, be mindful that we are aware, be mindful of that we are um, uh, caught, that we're kind of immersed and we're, um, we're, uh, we're, we're lost in, this, in these states. And, um, and it's, and really uh, in reading, um, uh, I, I've, uh, I've told people that I'm, I'm, I'm using this book, um, Satipatthana Meditation, a practice by, guide by uh, Bhikkhu Analyo. And, um, uh, and he talks about how, uh, and I, I really appreciated how clearly he talked about how these, the first, two satipatthanas uh, prepare us to, to be with those mental states. So, um, so the, um, the embodiedness that we develop in, in mindfulness of the body enables us to, in a way, take, to find a, a kind of a, a grounding in the body that you know, because when we are aware that we're, you know, we're, ang we're, we're, we're full of anger and rage because we feel whatever the story is, whatever the, you know, we, somebody, somebody, was, it wasn't fair, right? um, it, you know, or somebody said something that hurt our feelings, but not to say whether or not the person was unkind to us. It's not, it's not about, you know, what happened. It's not about the story, but it's about how are we carrying it? How are we with it? What is our relationship to that? And can we find some freedom in relationship to it? And, and so our capacity to be grounded in the body, to be present and, and get and let go of the story and uh, and 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 just know that we're sitting, to know to 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 connect with that quality of knowing, uh, which is always present. And so, um, so when we're when we're awash with a mental state, then that developed quality, uh, that developed skill, to be able to be present in the body helps us to bring this mindful investigation to what is going on. So for example, if, if, if there's anger, if there's rage, if there's you know, self-righteousness or you know, all these different you know, uh, ways that we experience aversion basically, which is not wanting you know, what is uh, pushing it away or turning away from it or escaping from it into, you know, some addictive behavior. There are so many ways that aversion um, gets acted out. Uh, so we can, with, with that mindful investigation, we can get under the current of thoughts. We can, you know, like, the story is there, you know, like the story we're telling ourselves, what we want to say to that person or, or, or how we think it's not right, not fair, etc. cetera. And, and, and then with mindful investigation, we can come back to the body and, and, and investigate what's happening in the body, you know, and with, and with aversion, you know, we might feel like the body's on fire, you know, or we might feel an intensity of contraction in the body or the jaw gripping or, or just a kind of a buzzing in the body of anxiety. Um, so all of these 
and, and, and having cultivated that capacity, however much we've cultivated, even if it's just for a moment, still that moment of insight is so important to help us to recognize that, that the story that we're telling ourselves and all of the anger that we feel about it is not the way, is not gonna lead us to freedom, you know? However, we plot our revenge. <laughs> it's not going to lead us to freedom. Uh, it's, it's just gonna lead us to deeper and deeper into um, samsara, into being caught, into stuckness. And um, so, so this foundation of, you know, mindfulness in the body helps us to be present with the mindful state. And so the Buddha just says, when, when, when we are, when greed is present, no greed is present. When, when anger is present, no anger is present. When delusion is present, confusion, no, it's present. And, and in the same way, uh, the, the, the mindfulness of feeling tone has also given us a foundation because when we have, as we've trained us ourselves to recognize, okay, this isn't, you know, it's cold in the room, but it's, it's just an unpleasant feeling tone, you know, it's, you know, and it, I don't need to make, you know, a, a, a an issue of it, you know, uh, I mean, even if, you know, we had a, a couple weeks ago, uh, parts of NDG had this like 13 hour power outage and, um, and, you know, and it got cold and, it, you know, and it was dark and, and, and it, you know, like it was un, unpleasant and it was not the end of the world, you know, uh, and, you know, it's, it's it's the anniversary of the uh, ice storm. Maybe some of you remember that uh, if you were in Montreal. So, yeah, it was. Um, I mean, I, I think I, I I was listening to the radio. People remembering. I think people are remembering a lot of the nice things, like the community and the you know how people help them, which is which is nice to remember. It was good, but it was also it was also pretty challenging, um, and. Um, yeah, and and when we recognize that, I even even body pain, you know, uh, um, you know, I, I've I've been learning a lot from body pain and uh, and recognizing that it is it can uh, it can be very uh, difficult to be with body pain, uh, and. You know, uh, you know. Last yesterday, I had the experience of, you know, I, I I wanted to, you know, to get something done before the surgery. I wanted to do some cleaning and ordering, and and I kind of pushed myself, and and I um, and I had this, you know. So I was ha having feeling, you know, I did I pushed myself too much, and I was having a lot of body pain. And, and then I, so I just sat with it and, and I recognized that the body was kind of just vibrating, you know, with this kind of, um, I, it was, I guess, just, just the body react, reacting to being in pain. And, and, and as I just sat with it and gave that space, it really, it's not that all the pain went away, but with all the, rea the reactivity around it, you know, subsided, and uh, and it was a, it was a real um, learning for me uh, to to be with what is unpleasant, and also of course with feeling with um, with the mental states. Uh, the Buddha said also to be present and attentive, be mindful uh, of what is also pleasant, pleasant, Vedna. So to be mindful 
of you know the um, appreciation of um, the beautiful things around us, the uh, you know uh, the, the the whiteness of new fallen snow, the um, appreciation appreciation of of having. Uh, good food to eat and a warm place to live. Uh, and also um, appreciation of the spiritual qualities. So that, that sense of connection that we feel with nature, uh, the gratitude that we may feel for the generosity of friends and, and uh, loved ones. Uh, you know, so, so many spiritual qualities that arise that also are beautiful and and, and, and it's really important so that we nourish ourselves with mindfulness of the, uh, these mental states that are beautiful. So we can cultivate them as well. We can cultivate metta, um, the, the, this, this quality of feeling friendship and kindness for, um, for those around us, for the, for the world, for all beings. Uh, and, and so this, we, when we, as we cultivate these beautiful qualities, um, which are also mental states, uh, we begin to learn how nourishing they are, how much they bring us into wholesome connection with the life around us, uh, compassion, uh, joy, for to see when other people are happy and thriving, that we can, you know, that it brings joy to our hearts. You know, as as the Dalai Lama said, you know, if you're only happy about your own good fortune, uh, you have one source of happiness. But if you can be happy for everyone's good fortune, you have uh, so many. Um, opportunities to rejoice and so um so this uh uh rejoicing with others and um and this uh, and also uh equanimity is a is also a, a mental state it's it's the neutral spiritual quality that we can be equanimous we can recognize that all things arise and pass away and even what is pleasant arises and passes away, away along with what is unpleasant uh, and so so that that kind of uh, balance of mind uh, that we that we know that we can be with what life brings and um, it, it, it brings confidence. So, um, so uh, yeah, I want to, um, I want to read a, a paragraph from, uh, I took out my bookmark. Yeah, this is, uh, this is a paragraph which really um, points out the connection between those first Satipatthanas, uh, the first two and this one. History abounds with examples of incredibly cruel actions that have had their bases in the fascination exerted by a particular political or religious ideal leading to a thorough, a thorough dissociation from basic qualities like kindness and compassion, at times in combination with relegating to some higher authority, the responsibility for harm inflicted on others. So we see that so much, right? That there is rationalization of, of 
doing harm, you know, because, you know, of religion or because of ideology or because, you know, of some, some uh, distorted view of reality, you know, like Putin's, you know, uh, vision of, um, of, you know, the, the uh, destiny of Russia. Other examples are no less atrocious. Events show the opposite side of the same, same coin when wallowing in emotions takes place in complete dissociation from the rational capacities of the mind. So, so like we can get lost in mental states. And so, um, you know, so it's not just that we, uh, so being aware, being mindful of mental states is, you know, this, he's pointing out the crucial difference between being, being in a, men, a, a mental state, an emotional state, and being mindful of it. The present, the present practice works against the, gra the, the, the grain of the ten tendency of dissociation based on the groundwork preparation of embodied awareness and clear recognition of the feeling tone of experience. cultivating the ability to monitor, monitor what goes on within, to recognize clearly the condition of our own mind is indispensable for, be, for being able to explore fully the potential of these two out of the four Satipatthanas. So it's again, just kind of a, you know, a, uh, in, in a bit more uh, perhaps precise and, um, wording what I've been talking about, you know, because, um, yeah, I think, uh, I think I might've, I might've not said this. So I'm, uh, I'm just going to repeat it if I have said it, that in feeling tone. So when we, when we experience the feeling tone of something that is pleasant. So when the mind, when we're not being mindful, so the mind tends to grasp it. And then we can get lost in desire, which is a mental state. When, when, we, when we experience the feeling tone of aversion, uh, we tend to reject it and push it away and want to escape from it. And so then, uh, so that's when we're not being mindful. And so then the mind can get lost in the mental state of aversion or hatred. And, 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 in, and when things are neutral and we're talking about the sensory, the sensory feeling tones here, when, when we experience neutral sensory feeling tone, the, um, we tend to shut off the mind. The mind gets distracted. The mind, the mind gets bored, and so uh, we can become uh, confused, scattered, spaced out. And so, so this is the the feeling tone, the uh, mental state of confusion. So, so it's recognizing feeling tone helps us to understand the foundations of where we, how we got caught up in those uh, emotional states. Um, so, um, so let's, uh, let's take a moment uh, before we begin the meditation practice to just uh, release the posture. Um, you can you can take a moment to shift or, or stretch.
so these teachings um, are so so beautifully empowering because when we get lost in these mental states, we can feel helpless. You know, we can feel, oh no, you know, here, here I am again. I'm lost. I'm lost in anxiety. I'm lost in, I'm lost in wanting. I'm, you know, feeling like, you know, I need something. I, uh, I'm loneliness, you know, uh, like feeling like I'm not good enough, self-judgment, you know, they, they are, they're very painful states. And so, um, you know, so what the Buddha says is like, we don't need to, we don't need to uh, push them away. We don't need to feel we don't need to judge ourselves and think, oh, you know, here I am again, lost in this state, you know, and we can just know them, you know, recognize them. And even, and even uh, as we gain confidence in the practice, we can even say, you know, oh, there you are again, self-doubt, you know, there you are again. I, I, you know, I know you. You know, and and recognize that these that the self doubt has its roots in causes and conditions, and and that and that we we don't need to push it away. We don't need to overpower it with saying affirmations to ourselves. You know. Uh, I mean, affirmations are fine, but um, you know, it, it's not it's not the power of positive thinking, you know, that that helps us to be free of self doubt. It's recognizing that self doubt is suffering, comes from suffering, and it's not who we are, and that and that as we can just be at peace with, be mindful of and accepting and knowing and aware their self-doubt, you know, recognizing it and, and just give it space, recognizing this is not me, this is not mine, this is not myself, this is not my identity. And just giving space to it, we can, we can, we can discover that it doesn't, it's not, it's not at the heart of who we are. Heart of who we are is the capacity to know, to know all of our experience, to be present, to be aware, to be aware with this quality of open heartedness and acceptance and kindness. Um, so, so that's what, I encourage you to practice today in our practice as we um, as we go into meditation to to settle in the body and and just as you know if stories overtake the mind as we become aware uh, with kindness with with compassion, with this grain, the seed of equanimity, which is present in every mindful moment, uh, to recognize, to be mindful of our experience as it's arising. So let's um, Once again, feel the body sitting on Mother Earth. Knowing that this body through which we, <clears throat> we meet every moment of experience <clears throat> <clears throat> is 
is our ally in practice. It's impermanent. It's prone to sickness, aging, and death. And it is also a foundation for the cultivation of mindfulness. So gathering our mindfulness in presence in the body, feeling the breath, So I invite you to bring a commitment in this practice to come home to the body, mindfulness of the body, and particularly to be aware as thoughts come, to bring this quality of investigation of what are the currents that are driving the thoughts that keep persisting, the stories, the storyline, the habits of how we think about me and mine and the other and how we create these narratives that often are full of uh, a sense of separation, alienation, and suffering. When we can touch into with mindfulness and acceptance what's driving the thinking process, these universal human experiences of greed, of anger, hatred, confusion, it's, it's orienting ourselves toward freedom. And when we can also be aware that letting go brings more openness, more joy. When we can love ourselves, have compassion for ourselves and love and have compassion and take joy in the life around us. But this, these mental states can be cultivated and they can support our practice. We can invite them, we can develop them, we can be nourished by them.
If you notice that the mind is getting hooked into some fantasy or narrative or story or emotional state, I invite you to, uh, to practice by just bringing the mindfulness to the body, recognizing 
what kind of emotions are being felt, perhaps naming them, that's helpful, can be helpful. But also very, very important beyond naming is noticing how they are alive in the body by contraction, by a vibration, by a feeling of closedness, or wanting to run away, or feeling ready to bolt. Whatever, however the body is expressing that mental state, to bring interest, to bring curiosity and kindness to it. And simply be mindful that this is there. And as we bring this practice, this quality of mindfulness to our experience, it gives the opportunity for insight, insight into seeing the nature of the experience. That it's anicca dukkha anatta, that it's impermanent, unreliable, or suffering, or stable. And that it's not self, not me, not mine, not who I am. dedicating the blessings of our practice, our 
commitment to practice, our commitment to coming back again and again, to waking up in this moment. May the, the goodness, the blessings, the merit of our practice, our collective practice, and the merit of our lives, the blessings of our lives, serve and support the happiness, well-being, and liberation of all beings. Thank you.